you're just fan. What? The, what is that? Oh. <laughs> Perhaps a more concentrated stream of air. Damn it. Hi everyone, I'm Claire. Today we're in the BA Test Kitchen and I'm making gourmet M&Ms. M&Ms are everyone's favorite candy, right? It's like everyone's favorite. Iconic, all American, there's no wrong occasion for M&Ms. I eat them in a very particular way. I like to bite really gently, crack it like an egg all the way around, and then like kind of bite off the candy coating and then shoot it chocolate, and then just chocolate. I think that there's maybe no better candy than peanut M&Ms. Oh my God, they're so good. I love peanut M&Ms because they're less sweet because of the peanut. Oh my God, these are so, seriously, they're so good. I'm not familiar with the other kinds. Ooh, I remember crispy. These are like puff rice in them. Is that what the crispy is? I mean, not bad at all. Hazelnut spread feels kind of fancy. Caramel, I want this to be good, but I'm afraid it's gonna to be too sweet. One is really, really good, and then like three, you feel sick. Ooh, English toffee. What makes it Thai coconut? I don't like the looks of these. I think you should try. These are emphatically not good here. Do I not get to see what this is? You'll know. Oh, no. I know. Why really? did they do that? This is like coconut bubble bath when like you accidentally lick a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> she has to make peanut m and It is the ultimate m and m Interesting, this might be a first for gourmet makes where I don't just make the classic. Probably the best m and product. The peanut? Yeah. Yeah, here. I'm okay. Just try one. I know how they taste. Just try one, Fred. It's cool, I'm good. Fred, you have to try one. Christ, you can eat I a half. I know exactly how it tastes. You can eat a half. Oh, wow. That's good. <laughs> Never had that before. <laughs> if it's even half as good, yeah. you'll still be in a great place. It's so good. It needs to have a little shine on the exterior. Okay. Thin, crispy exterior. Okay. The coating is pretty miraculous, and like the candy shell, obviously, as well. They managed to suspend the peanut perfectly in the chocolate. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, I think you got, this one will be a little, um, a little more of a challenge than the old Pocky, Pocky, Pocky sticks. <laughs> and a Pocky still took four days. Did it really? Three and a half. There's lots of consensus around peanut M&M's being the superior M&M, although I will always have a soft spot for original. I feel better about making peanut M&M's than I do regular M&M's, weirdly. It just might be easier to figure out like the mold situation about with, with a peanut M&M. So I actually like, that idea is good to me. Overall, it's not gonna be that hard? You're trying to bait me to say that it's not gonna be that hard, so then later on I can edit it so that then, uh, yeah. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> I got it. Wait, wrote up. Peanut M&M's, it's a pretty well toasted peanut, like golden brown all the way through. It's not pale. It's not always the same thickness of chocolate all the way around the peanut itself. So like this one is a larger peanut and this one is like a smaller peanut, thicker chocolate. I'm feeling like this gives me more license to have them be like a little more regular, not perfectly uniform. It's just hard for me to think of a way to perfectly suspend the peanut in chocolate if I'm not doing it in a mold. Got I'm not sure about it otherwise. There, each one has an M on it. I would really like to see that on video, how they get the M on. It is a very, very thin, very sort of shattering candy coating. They are pretty solid. This one is kind of egg shaped and it's like at its longest point, it's about two centimeters. We're gonna get you, um, what do they call those? Uh, uh, you can measure things just with the little, with the two pins. Caliber, right? Caliper, that's what I said, Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get you one of those. Okay, get me one of those. You earned it this year. Do you have your jeweler's thing? My what? You like. What's that? You mean an eye loop? Yeah. Boom, no problem. Where'd you get it? I bought it. So what you do is you put this to your eye, and uh -huh. then you adjust focus with this. That's what uh -huh. I do. Uh-huh. Ooh. What is that, like four carat? The one very interesting thing that I noticed, it looks like there's multiple layers of the, of of the candy. candy coating. Preliminary layer, a white, 
sugar layer and then the and then the color. It almost looks like a coconut, like a cocoa butter coating. Then make a candy coating and then a color. You, you coating. think so? No, but then it looks like more waxy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Claire, what are you seeing? Hold on, I don't, hold on, I can't tell. Nothing? No, I can see, I'm just... God? <laughs> it's time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. Milk chocolate, parentheses, sugar, chocolate, skim milk, cocoa butter, lactose, milk fat, peanuts, soy lecithin, salt, artificial unnatural flavors, close parentheses, sugar, peanuts, cornstarch, less than 1%, palm oil, corn syrup, dextrin, coloring, includes blue one, lake, red 40, yellow six, yellow five, blue one, red 40, lake, yellow six, lake, yellow five, lake, blue two, lake, blue two, carnauba wax, gum acacia. A lot of lake colors. I've definitely heard that the lakes are not great for you. The best thing to do is to go over to the computer and do a little bit of research. So M&M is a flagship product of the Mars Wrigley Confectionery Division of Mars Incorporated. The candy coated chocolate concept was inspired by a method used to allow soldiers to carry chocolate in warm climates without it melting. And you see a thicker layer of white and then a thin layer of the colored coating. The first step is you want to mix the liquid materials into a paste. Send the chocolate to the tempering. The chocolate goes through several. Wait a minute. The next step is we send the chocolate to the tempering. The chocolate goes through several. <laughs> I'm so mad. Everybody hear that? <laughs> we just heard that. I'm very excited that we watched this video now. I'm trying to have the tempering now. Yeah, but it's um, really yeah. Why do you provoke me? <laughs> yes. Nope. Oh, yeah, this one didn't hold together very well. Ah, the whole thing, the whole thing just fell apart. The test strip did not set, so I don't think it's tempered. I feel comfortable tempering chocolate at this point. You may you do it sous vide, it does the work all for you. It's no big deal. Okay, I think that there's four parts to this process. One is really easy, and that's toasting and salting some peanuts. Two will be tempering the chocolate and putting it in the molds to set. Three will be applying some kind of candy coating, possibly in stages. And then four will be the, adding the coloring on the outsides. I can't really do a lot without a mold. I will look through where we keep all of the molds and see if there's anything I can work with. Anything. The plan is we'll get the ingredients and materials we need and we'll get started with day two. Be confident. I'm gonna be I wanna be careful. I wanna be careful. We're starting a little bit later today. I already had lunch and then I proceeded to come over here and without thinking eat 15 peanut M&Ms because they're so good. First I have to take a look at some of the equipment that we gathered to help me with like the, the fabrication. I might also, have gone a little overboard. Okay. I love but that. I wanted to have options. Overboard is just the right amount. All right, this will look familiar to anyone who remembers the Oreo episode. This is something called Easy Mold, which allows you to mix and form your own food grade silicone molds. So this is like mini egg molds. This could be really good for with peanut. What's this? A little surprise. <gasps> Ooh. This is a caliper, which I didn't even really know what that was. This is what Brad was talking about. You could like measure the the inner layers and stuff. <laughs> that one's just gone. One. But so I got these, but then I also ordered you some fancy Virginia. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, look at these. These do look like fancy peanuts. The egg is the closest shape we can get, I think, at this point. But we can also play around with this. We can, let's do both. Let's do both. I think I want to start on the toast and peanuts to start. to think more about molds. Peanut M&Ms, though irregular, are not egg-shaped. Like, they don't have, like, one sort of wider end and one tapered end. The other option is making our own from this, like, food-safe silicone putty that we got at Michael's. So I might pick out a sort of classically shaped peanut M&M and use that as the mold. All right, there we, there we go. Now I'm going to use my molding stuff. These are the two halves of the putty. I mix them together. When the color is totally seamless, without streaks, then I have three minutes of work time to create the cast, and then it needs to just sit for 20 minutes. I'm trying to press them down halfway. I don't really care how close they are to each other. Totally hardened. 
So I'm gonna let this sit until it's cured 20 minutes. While I'm waiting for this, I think work on tempering some chocolate. What's tempering cut chocolate? Are you kidding? I refuse to say for the probably 12th time what tempered chocolate is, so I'm just gonna go to the tape on that one. Can just pick your episode. Tempered chocolate is chocolate that is heated, cooled, and then heated again to specific temperatures so that the chocolate has a firm snap. I'm working in such small quantities, it's gonna be a little bit easier. So I feel okay about it. Okay, so I'm gonna weigh out my chocolate, equal weights, milk and dark. I like how soft and creamy milk chocolate melts, but I like the reduced sugar and like bitter notes of dark. So these are gonna go into the water and I'm going to weight it. This contraption moves water and heats it to a very specific temperature, so I have it on 115. I submerged the chocolate, and so this is just going to slowly start to melt. This is melting and coming up to its high temperature point. All right, do you think 150 degree water is too hot to put your hands in? 115. Uh, no, I think it should be fine. Okay. What does tempering mean? <laughs> Never mind. Do the tape. Never no. mind. So now that it came down to our low temp, I'm going to bring it back up to our working temp, which is going to be 95. But once this hits 96, I'm going to sit here for the next five minutes and, and agitate it. So let me pivot back to the molds. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take little bits and carefully form them around each M&M. &M. Hey, Brad, can you hand me a rolling pin real Ciao. quick? That means Any yes. preferred style? Nope, just one as quickly as you can. <laughs> not, I don't, okay, <laughs> not this one. Oh, so you do have a preferred style. <laughs> I thought they were all the same. As long as it's, I don't end up fusing the two halves, I feel pretty good about it. Oh my, I think it's stuck. I should have greased it. Mm. Eek, <laughs> something bad happened. Do you want like an offset? Oh! <laughs> You think it's okay? Don't worry, Claire. No, nice, 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 good. But what happened was the two, yes, the two sides of the mold kind of fused. Rhoda rescued it and made it better. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so here's the two halves. This side is really like two thirds and this side is kind of one third and they fit together like this. I do have to be very certain that I have lined up the molds really well, but there is a way that, they, that it naturally wants to fit together. So I don't think that part's gonna be too challenging. The right shaped peanut should fit very easily inside the mold, but without a lot of room on any one particular side. I'm gonna pull out one of the bags to start working with it. I think I'm going to skip the part where I chill one side. I don't know, I'm just gonna wing it, see what happens. So I'm putting a small amount of chocolate in, followed by the peanut, because I want it to be suspended in the chocolate and not be pressing through to the very bottom of the mold. So I might actually end up using this whole bag to do this half, and then I can use a second bag to fill the other half of the impressions and then combine them. The question is, how does this fit together? So now I'm gonna chill this and wait for the chocolate to set and come back tomorrow and see how they look. I'm so excited to look, because if it works out, then we're gonna have, we'll have like 13 peanut M&Ms part way done. Ooh. Well, as a first pass, maybe it's not that bad. But there's definitely areas where I did not put enough chocolate. Like this is a good one. I can just gently smooth out these edges and then I have a fully coated chocolate. But the size looks pretty good. Like the overall proportions and everything, I think look good. Wow, this feels like a very like dim statement, but you mix peanuts and chocolate, it tastes a lot like a peanut m &M. So let me clean off these molds. I'm gonna get them in some hot water and then start all over with the tempering process, making two more bags of chocolate. And now I'm going to think about the candy coating. What we learned from watching the videos, the candy coating is sprayed on in like dozens of coatings and then left to dry. So I'm gonna get out the airbrusher and see if we can play around with that. Oops. This is our official Gourmet Makes airbrusher that we got on Amazon. And we used this last for Reese's peanut butter cups where it did not work, but I was glad that we had it as a resource. If I can make a sugar solution to make the candy shell, just the final layers of the shell, I just add food coloring to it and build up the color that way, is what, what I'm thinking. What about the stamp? I've not figured out the stamp. I'm gonna think about it. What is this? How does this work? 
Hey, Brad, I don't know how to use the airbrusher. The what? The airbrusher. The airbrusher? The airbrush machine. <laughs> I don't know. Hit the gun. Hit it again. Hold it. Where'd I go? I don't know. I don't know. I gotta go. Oh, I'm gonna make a sugar solution of 360 grams of sugar. I think I'm gonna need a bigger jar. Okay, so this looks good. And by that I mean it's clear. I'm gonna airbrush it on and then the idea is that the water evaporates and the sugar like recrystallizes and so eventually with enough layers it'll look white. That's my idea. Oh god. Oh no. Oh, god. So that close because I probably need to do that many sprays, and instead I kind of did, I did more than that. But like, how many times do I have to do this to build up a candy shell that's like one millimeter thick? Like one thousand times. We don't we don't have time for this. Let me just try dipping it. There's a fan. But this is how you find in kitchens. I know. You? Oh, yeah. But I need like a real fan. Let's all blow together. <laughs> This things have gone off the rails. So I'm trying to encourage evaporation. This is just the the one coat. It is evaporating, but it you know I'm not getting like really even coverage either. So I want to try rolling it in cornstarch. Here I'm just gonna put this right here. Okay, cornstarch. I mean it doesn't have really any flavor. It's doing what I want it to do, which is kind of filling in some of those rough areas. Hopefully creating a smooth surface where everything will cling to it. I think that the one with the cornstarch did have a better coating. I don't know how these are gonna be. I might have to come up with a plan B. Well, this already feels like plan B, because plan A was the airbrush. I have to kind of sit so I can evaluate. I'm gonna go back to the chocolate tempering and focus on filling the molds. These are, molds are chilled, but fridge temp, not freezer temp. What I'm gonna do differently this time is I'm gonna be more aware of how deep I'm pressing the peanut into the first half, and I'm gonna just film more overall. Do you feel like you're getting better at this? I think I'm getting worse at this. Because I put so much more chocolate in this time, I wanna make sure that the molds are in fully in contact, so I'm gonna weight this down and then chill it. Okay, let's see. Oh my God, they look so good. <gasps> the chocolate looks good. Adding the extra chocolate and making sure the molds are really full worked. There are some areas where the molds met and some of the chocolate formed a seam. Probably we'll just use like a paring knife to smooth that off, but these look really good. I'm really happy with these. I'm gonna do one more round. All right, I feel good about this. This just goes on top. Take a little dab of chocolate and I'm gonna basically smooth out the surfaces of all of these. The smoother the surface, the smoother that candy shell will be. Okay, I'm gonna get my molds out and pop out that last batch. I managed to make these look worse. I put these aside. <laughs> Not, I'm a little upset about these. This is that original M&M that I dipped. Can you see really, 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 really close up? There's a thin white layer. Do you see that? Do you need the eye loop? See the little white outline? So I have an idea about adjusting the method so it's more like the actual method for making peanut M&Ms, which is using sort of like a drum to rotate the candies constantly while the syrup dries. So we don't have a big candy drum in here, although I've been asking for one for years. But in the meantime, I'm gonna try to fashion my own. What about the salad spinner? But the salad spinner, because of centrifugal force, the salad spinner, like, they won't move. So I might try to use the bowl of the KitchenAid. Maybe I move it at an angle. I have these, like, rejects from earlier batches, and I'm gonna do a test with them. Oh, it's 100% gonna crush them. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real glad I did a test. Just like a light, a light tap. Give me the sound center, Dan. Your plan here, and whose idea was it? <laughs> <laughs> Dan had an idea. Use a salad spinner and put the bowl in it, which I was like, it's definitely not gonna work, but I think it might work. The idea is to make sort of like a, a homemade candy pan 
where the M&Ms are constantly in motion and they get layer upon layer of syrup drizzled on them and then that evaporates. And because they're constantly moving, the coating is really even and kind of smooth. You don't want to help. What? I want to make a drum. Have fun. A drum? <laughs> Like a, a candy drum. Yeah, five o'clock on a Friday. Like, a, like a candy pan. <laughs> yeah, it's 501. I'm gonna add of the syrup to the bowl. Ooh. Oh my god, you know what this reminds me of? Like the power ball. Yeah. Or like <laughs> so what worked about that was it did get the motion that I was looking for of like constant agitation. What doesn't work is one, there's no air circulation inside, and two, I think I need to redo the syrup without boiling it to get like something like it went wrong. So this is your drum? Yeah. Not a bad idea. It was Dan's idea. All right, Dan. How big a hole you up? As big as you can make. Are you sure about that? Yeah, but let's try this one first. Let's try the other salad spinner. But don't Four. you, how about we just do like this? Oh God. Ah! Dude, crack a little. <laughs> I hate the noise that that makes. Oh. Drum roll. That's nice, though. I mean, they look kind of wet, but like they are, they're getting coated. They are getting coated. It's working. So this test was moderately successful. I have a couple of base layers on a portion of the M&Ms. Kind of wish I was back tomorrow because it's kind of exciting. We're really innovating here, but I'm going to have to wait. I'm taking a break from shooting. I'll be back in a month, and, and I got to go. Happy June, everyone. Yeah, we're, okay, where to even start? It's been 30 days since I was last here. I had forgotten what episode we were even on, and then it all came back to me in waves. <clears throat> I started to add the candy shell to one batch, and like they look really good. And I want to continue to build up that coating a little bit more. I don't think it'll be a complicated process, but it might take a little bit of time because I let them dry in batches, like coat, spin, let dry, and then repeat. Oh, look. Nice. Yeah. Where are you gonna put the pants? I think once they, wow. yeah, let up, like put them on a par on parchment, and let them dry, in between batches. Yeah, check these bad boys out. Oh, boom. Celery home. What happened? Is it on? No. Loose wires? No, we're good. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. It just spins so fast you can't even see it, right? But there's no air coming out of it. Yeah, over this way. A little bit. Here, I got a bigger fan too. Yeah, yeah. Let's, maybe we'll go with Use that. Use all three. Okay. This only has a couple of layers on it. Maybe I just do everything together. Oh. Hold on, I gotta tape, I gotta tape it. Okay. Okay, they're no longer moving. Damn it, how can I just tape it? I also can't really see what's going on in there, but there we go. I think I, I, think I fixed it. I can't tell if anything's happening. Okay. I think I probably put a little too much syrup in there. Maybe I have to switch them out into a different bowl. Switch sides. Oh, okay, they look good. They're not terribly sticky, which is great. So there's been sufficient kind of drying inside the spinner. And now I'm just gonna let them finish that drying process. I think that the coverage looks pretty good. Like there aren't those patches where the syrup didn't quite coat. So I'm happy about that. They look great. So you can see they have, they've started to get that bloom. And now we're- guess how many coats do you I think maybe like four coats is a guess. Could be more. I'm thinking I have a couple thoughts I'm considering. By the time this coating looks fully opaque white. It's
it's going to be too thick. There's patches where the syrup is thicker and it's dried thicker and it's white. And then there's patches where it's thinner and you can see some of the chocolate through there. It broke apart a little bit, but I'm still able to see the coating. So the thicker parts, I think, are too thick. Uh, let me compare it to an actual peanut you know, M&M. Oh, okay. We have a problem. This is a much thinner candy coating. These are huge now. They kind of look like um, Jordan almonds, actually. I'm so glad I didn't do like three more layers. I have a new approach. I need to actually take off some of the shell. Maybe painting them or like rubbing them with a little bit of water to dissolve some of that shell. That might be a horrible idea. Maybe I want to do this with a paintbrush. So I'm using this paintbrush dipped in a little bit of water to try to dissolve away some of the thicker parts. It doesn't bother me so much if it's a little bit uneven and some parts are thicker and some parts are thinner. I just want a smooth surface for airbrushing. I think it's not bad. I've kind of given up on this plan because I did seven M&Ms and realized that they looked the same, if not worse, than the ones that were still in the bowl. So <laughs> arrived at a new technique, which is doing this a lot. It's like kind of working. I mean, I have what is basically like powdered sugar in the bottom of this bowl. So I know that some of the coating is coming off. And then I'm going to just try to airbrush them because I'm like, we got to move it along. I mean, that's a, that's a plenty thick sugar coating. Let's try to airbrush these white. So we have a couple of things to try. One is this edible art decorative cake paint, which is white. Well, I want to see what this looks like. I've never used this before. An ingredient listed is also shellac. <laughs> At least if I get this on my clothes, I'm not really staining it. It really, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, oh well. Let's see, it works pretty well. Oh, it does not smell good. It does not smell good. It really smells bad. It does smell like shellac. rocks. It looks like what's in someone's driveway. So I wish they looked better, but that's about, that's par for the course, I feel like. My concern is that one, they're not smooth. Two, they're not going to taste good. Three, the candy coating is going to be more powdery than like crack, kind of, like hard. I don't have another plan for the candy coating besides the one that I've been doing. So this is just how they're going to be. Maybe the gourmet M&M doesn't have quite the shattering texture of the candy outside. Oh well. <sighs> Where are the other airbrush colors? So six colors. I'm going to divide up the peanut M&Ms that I have into six groups. And I guess I'll start with red. I'll go in order. So, oh god. <laughs> you guys, I have to put on seven more aprons. I have a feeling that it's not going to be the layer that I want it to be. But let's just see. The intensity of the color is good. I mean, I put a lot on there. But it's so not smooth, like at all. I mean, can we shoot all of the beauties as cross sections? Because this looks pretty good. Even layer of chocolate, an even enough looking white coating. It really doesn't look like blood, it's kind of grossing me out. <laughs> yeah, they look amazing. Great. And they stop moving and they don't look very good. I'm not thrilled with how they look, but I think that continuing to work on something so smooth is just, is like a pointless exercise. So maybe I can compensate by like making a really great M on them for M&M. But I think tomorrow I'm just gonna go with what I have and airbrush the other colors. Not great. Really wish they were smoother. Rona, yesterday we did the Salad's Better Method. It did not work because it creates more of like a powdery sugar coating than a like crack, hard crack kind of shattering. Food coloring like settles into the kind of textured parts and creates a mottled finish rather than something like really smooth and shiny like this. Might I remind you uh -huh. that in the beginning, you like these because the peanuts are not perfect themselves. So each uh -huh. one is a little bit different. That so is don't true. Don't worry too much about it being like 100% smooth and perfect as long as it tastes amazing. 
I, I, like, I like what you're saying. I think you're <laughs> I could try to do like a thin royal icing. Because when you dip it, it does leave a really nice smooth finish. Thanks, okay, Rhoda. Thank Always fruitful, thanks. <laughs> I need to devise a system for dipping them where I don't have flat surface because it needs to be evenly coated all the way around. Basically, I need a way to like suspend these either from something or above something while they dry. Oh, but what if I, does anybody have any fishing line? Thank you so oh, much. Really like, but this is all I have left. Of oh, it, okay. Which you could use. Prop stylists often have stuff like this, little tricks of the trade. I think I can just make parallel lines as long as I pull it tight enough. So the idea is dip and then place like that. So it just, you know, very gently sits on top of these tiny little lines. Royal icing is powdered sugar mixed into egg white. It dries very, very hard. So I might get more of that shattering texture. I'm starting this process. I'm nervous. So I'm going to dip. So it like sort of spear the M&M dip and then gently somehow place it onto my rack. So here it is. So much smoother looking, that's for sure. Hope it's not too thick. Yeah. Okay. I'm so impressed. Really? Yeah. That's all I care about. Thanks, it's, Rhoda. Looking underneath, there's drip like a more. big drip, so I just have to be like, just have to like scrape it. Cool. This is working really well. Yeah, but it's been like 10 minutes and I've done one. So now I'm gonna go into production mode and get them all coated and then get them on my rack and let them fully dry. This is taking way too long. I'm getting frustrated and bored. My new plan is just to pour the glaze over all of these. Cause I'm, I can't, I'm gonna kill myself if I have to dip each one. My concerns are that I'm not gonna get coverage on the bottom. So I have to be, I have to kind of like turn them as I go. Plan C. <laughs> Plan C is I'm just dipping them with my hands. Who's ma I'm so hungry. Who's making pasta right now? I can okay. smell it. I smell like butter. <laughs> Good news, the deviled eggs being over there coincides with me needing to let these dry. The process went well, I think. My sense is that there aren't going to be big marks from the fishing line. Okay, so here, here they are. They are, um, they're not sticky, but there is like a tackiness. So I don't really know what to think about that, but we have to move things along. Gone through a few of these and I have not that many left. So I'm gonna only do a couple of each. Ooh, some of these are stickier than others. The strings worked very well, I have to say. They definitely are smoother than before, but I think it's an improvement. I mean, we'll know when the color goes on. I, I seriously, I need a hazmat suit. Really not covering that well, huh? They look so bad. <laughs> How many am I down to now? It's pretty self-explanatory. They don't look good. So I think it probably would be best practice to go back to this allegedly 100% edible white cake paint. This is the stuff with the shellac in it. I'm sorry. Just Maybe people shouldn't eat these. Is it wafting? <laughs> I, it's wafting at Kevin. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Ow. Ow, I hit my hand on it. The royal icing was so thin and it had such a high proportion of egg white that it's like, is it ever gonna dry? The idea is basically to coat them in powdered sugar to basically like absorb and, and accelerate drying. If these don't look any better than the red ones I did yesterday, I quit. So, while these finish drying, I'm gonna move on to the final phase, which is putting an M or some kind of stamp on it. <laughs> I don't think this is very useful. There's other sizes. <laughs> There's the M. It could work. I, I hate that airbrush machine. I'm not, I was really excited about it, and now I just think it's terrible. Maybe even like Q-tip or something, like to dab it. So here's the stencil. I just cut out the M and taped it all around it. The plan of action is to use the stencil to make the letters and the royal icing. Oh. It's not, it's not bad. 
So I can really only do this on ones where they're dry, and like these are, some of them are a little bit tacky still. This is one of those moments where I just think to myself, thank God. It's her, not me. That it's her and not <laughs> me. I'm so proud of you. I think that's overly generous, but no, thank you. No, it's not. And I'm so proud of you. We'll see if this works. But thank you, Chris. That means a lot. There's a lot of issues here. One, it wasn't dry. Two, the royal icing is too thick. Three, I'm trying to put a flat thing on a rounded thing, and that's not easy. I think I have to use a white paint. This is a tough one, eh? Yeah, it's pretty tough. They look fossilized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do better on the next one. Fry really fast. I put an M on one of each color and now I'm done. While I clean up, these will continue to dry and then we move on to the final tasting phase. Thank God. I mean, it tastes like a peanut M&M. &M. I'm still getting that layers of... Oh, of sugar? Candy with mm -hmm. the chocolate, mm -hmm. like separation. The peanut is lovely. I need to warn people that the food coloring will dye their mouth. Is my arm, arm, her mouth is red, is mine a little red? I think you should be very happy about this. Yes. Please. Which one is the <laughs> yes. Which one do you think is is my, the homemade? I wish that I had almost like leaned into the like rustic look. I was delusional if I thought I was gonna get like a perfect smooth shiny coating like this. When it comes to shape and, and the size, I think you pretty much nailed it. Thank you. So, I'm happy yes. about that. I did use peanut M Ms to make molds, <laughs> so. <laughs> It's a touch more bitter, mm -hmm. which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Christina has like a bad look on her face. No, I think that's like surprisingly really good. I shouldn't be Thanks. surprisingly. But, um, I know I was surprised. You can say that you're surprised. I like the way that shell like kind of crumbles very gently mm -hmm. in your mouth. Andy, can you stick out your tongue? We, we, we'll all do it. We'll all do it. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> if you wanted to like put a glove on to handle it, I would understand. It's also going to dye your mouth. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't done the side by side. Wait, that cut really well. Are they using like food grade shellac or something? I don't know what they're using. What are they using? That's what I, I use. The peanut flavor is great. Thank you. It's really nicely developed. Mm -hmm. It's there, it's present, and it's uh -huh. got texture. Uh -huh. The chocolate is nice. The one thing I think I miss is just like in the M&M, it's like you get that like the crunch of the clear coat, honestly, like, so the visual is not 100% there. Big yeah. Big Yeah. I've got like a nicely toasted peanut in the center. In the center. In the center. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, also, I forgot this and would like to add that it's a month old. It still tastes good. What These. Is? Oh. Because I took a month oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like this one really got me at the end. The last couple of days were frustrating. But if I were to do it again, I would make a couple of changes, but like ultimately I'm happy with the flavor and shape and all that. So it was a qualified success, not an unqualified success. Here's how you make gourmet peanut M&Ms. Use food safe silicone putty to create a two-sided mold enclosing a dozen or so nicely shaped peanut M&Ms. Let the mold cure, separate the two sides, and pop out the M&Ms. Roast whole skinless peanuts on a rimmed baking sheet in a 350 degree oven until golden brown and fragrant. Sprinkle the hot peanuts generously with kosher salt and set aside to cool. Fill half the mold with tempered 50-50 milk and dark chocolate and press a whole roasted salted peanut about halfway into the chocolate. Fill the other half of the mold to the chocolate and join the halves, making sure they're aligned and pressing firmly. Put a weight on top of the mold and chill until the chocolate is set. Pop the chocolate covered peanuts out of the molds, break away any excess chocolate and smooth the seams by rolling the pieces between your palms with a bit more melted chocolate. Set pieces aside. Drill six or seven holes in the top of the salad spinner. Make a super saturated sugar solution and let it cool completely. Place chocolate covered peanuts inside a bowl that fits inside the salad spinner and coat with cooled sugar syrup. Stir and agitate the pieces together constantly inside the bowl in front of a fan until the pieces no longer stick together. Then place the bowl inside the spinner. Set the 
spinner on its side at a 90 degree angle and pull the handle to rotate the bowl slowly so the pieces tumble onto each other continuously. Spin until the pieces are dry to the touch and there is a whitish coating all over. Repeat the coating, drying, and spinning process four more times. Dip each of the dry coated pieces in a thin royal icing and allow all excess to fully drip away. Suspend the dipped pieces on a rack made of fine fishing twine and let dry completely using fans to speed the process. Roll the dried pieces between your palms to coat in a light layer of powdered sugar. Then use an airbrush machine to coat the dipped pieces in an even layer of white food coloring and let dry completely, again with the fans. Airbrush the M&Ms all over with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and brown food coloring to make equal numbers of each color M&M. Let dry completely. Using a stencil, paint a tiny M logo on some or all of the M&Ms with royal icing and let dry. I keep having this feeling that like, I think there was an easier way this whole time. What are your thoughts on that? No one said anything.